morning, good Friday evening to you. Hope you uh, survived a very wintry Friday across the valley with biting winds. And well, unfortunately, we'll have to get used to it. The weekend's going to be kind of in that same vein. I want to thank everyone who tuned in last evening for my annual winter forecast on 21 News. You watched it online. If you watched the long version, I really thank you for that because it was a very long video. I think I clocked in at 28 minutes or so. Oh, but we had a lot to talk about, and in case you missed it, I would encourage you to, to encourage you to go back and watch whatever version you want to watch. The short version, the long version, you can read it on my weather blog, ericwfmj.com. But in this video, I'll, I'll touch briefly on kind of the highlights. Here's a look at the temperature forecast. My uh, temperature forecast for the winter of 2022-2023, I think odds are roughly about the same for near average and somewhat below average temperatures this winter. And a pretty decent chance that this will be our coldest winter in about five years, maybe going back to the winter of 2017, 2018. And there's a chance it'll be our coldest winter since uh, seven or eight years ago. There's a chance of that anyway. We're not predicting a harshly cold winter, but it does not seem all that likely that we'll have temperatures that are way above the average. Kind of uh, interestingly, uh, you can compare that against the uh, National Weather Service or the Climate Prediction Center's uh, updated winter outlook. Um, they updated this yesterday. Um, and where we differ, uh, the Weather Service favors at least a little bit warmer than average temperatures a little bit farther to, the, farther to the west than I have. They don't have the blues, the odds favoring below average temperatures. They don't have those as far east as I have. But the general idea is not that dissimilar with the best chance for colder than average weather up here near the Canadian border and the best chance for warmer than average temperatures in parts of the deep south and uh, the, south the southeastern U.S. So we'll see how things turn out. We'll be doing an updated winter forecast in a few weeks once we get into middle December. So again, a breakdown of some odds of, of different outcomes here. The map I showed you, kind of that was the most likely outcome. The chances of it going sideways and the forecast not working out and maybe it being a warmer than average winter it's a one in four chance. It's not negligible at all. You know, if a few things break the other way, yeah, it could end up being kind of similar to the last couple of winters in that it'll be warmer than average. That's not the most likely outcome at this point, but I wouldn't bet against it uh, because you'll notice it's 25% chance of that outcome as opposed to 30% chance of uh, our near average or cooler than average uh, temperature forecast. So it's not significantly lower odds. We just think that uh, the odds are stronger this year than many of our recent winters of it ending up being a little bit cooler than the average. Extreme winters on either end are not likely. An extremely cold winter, somewhat more likely than an extremely warm winter, but again, those odds, both of them are pretty small. In the snow department, the most likely outcome is for a near average winter. Now, we've had four consecutive below average winters in the snow department at the Youngstown Ward Airport where our uh, official records are kept. Last winter, we had about 60 inches. The 30-year average is now up to about 67 or so, so we, we fell short, and we've done that the last four years. We think we'll, the, the highest odds are for near-average snow, but closely behind above average, with the next most likely outcome dropping down to 20% at a another below-average season in the snow department. All right, uh, we did not have any snow squall warnings here locally today, but we did have a handful off to our east. Those are the, those are pink polygons. Um, we had some snow showers that whiten the ground in some spots today. But the heftier snow showers uh, and snow squalls were confined to the Pittsburgh area, south and east. Uh, the Pittsburgh and, and uh, State College Weather Service offices today issued several of these snow squall warnings. And you can kind of think of a snow squall warning as kind of the wintertime equivalent of a severe thunderstorm warning. Now, we're not talking about damaging winds and hail in snow squall warnings, but Big time reductions in visibility and sudden reductions in visibility. And oftentimes these cause big pileups, unfortunately, on area roadways and especially interstates because uh, you can go from everything being fine to a whiteout in a matter of 100 yards in some circumstances. Um, so we don't like to see these. And uh, this is actually a pretty new product issued by the National Weather Service just over the last handful of years, uh, starting, starting to issue these snow squall warnings because so we in the weather enterprise do want you to treat them pretty seriously. They can really mean some business. All right, regionally, of course, the big weather story as we head uh, into the weekend, the ongoing lake effect bonanza in western New York. This is a 24-hour radar loop. We had a lot of thunder and lightning last night and this morning around the Buffalo area. Uh, as of a few hours ago, Orchard Park, New York, 
just south of downtown Buffalo, and coincidentally where the Buffalo Bills uh, football stadium is. Uh, as of a few hours ago, they had 54 inches in counting for the last couple of days, but that was a few hours ago. Certainly that number has changed by now. And, you know, someone's going to end up with 80 inches probably out of this event before it starts to wind down um, tomorrow night. Back here at home, well, it's going to be a blustery and cold start to the weekend, but we will be snow-free during the daylight hours on Saturday. Clouds may increase for a time during the afternoon and evening. This cold front rolls through and instigates lake effect a little farther to the south late tomorrow night into Sunday morning. This will impact some of our northern communities, we think, especially in areas north and east of downtown Youngstown, once you're up into Trumbull and Mercer counties. Maybe enough to cause some slick spots Sunday morning. The lake effect machine then shuts down later Sunday and leaving us with quiet weather for Monday and actually for a good chunk of next week. So no surprise, of course, there'll be some hefty additional snowfall totals between now and Sunday morning up into Ashtabula County, parts of Lake and Geauga counties, and over into Crawford and Erie County, PA. In our TV viewing area, again, kind of similar to the setup that we've had early, that we've had occasionally this week, especially uh, earlier on yesterday. Uh, once you're far enough to the south, hardly anything Sunday morning, um, but enough to coat the ground in some spots uh, in Trumbull and Mercer counties, and even an inch or two uh, will be a possibility once you're far enough to the north. I wouldn't even be surprised if a place like Mesopotamia ended up with close to three inches. Maybe Greenville over Mercer County. That zone, uh, you might end up with three inches late Saturday night into Sunday morning. Whether you see no snow or a couple inches, it's going to be cold everywhere. Wind chills in the teens Saturday. Wind chills pretty close to zero as Sunday gets underway. <laughs> Pardon me. So the weekend forecast, air temperature is no higher than about 31 Saturday and 28. That's it on Sunday with wind chills. Again, single digits early, no better than 20 in the afternoon. Things are going <coughs> to, pardon me, they are going to turn around next week. Good news for holiday travelers, pre-Thanksgiving travelers. If you're heading out of town, if you have people coming into town, we're looking A-OK -okay Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And actually, Thanksgiving Day itself is likely to be dry. Gathering moisture, though, by Thursday night may lead to rain and snow during parts of Friday. A lot of question marks still about that Black Friday forecast for one week from today. But I do think there will be a system somewhere in the area with some impacts and probably Cooler temperatures again as we head deeper into that long holiday weekend. So right now our first uh, you know stab at the Thanksgiving forecast, we'll call it partly sunny. Daytime temperatures getting into the mid-40s, actually pretty much par for the course for the, uh, what is that, the 25th, uh, 24th of November. Pretty close to an average high in the mid-40s. So of course we'll be updating the Thanksgiving forecast in subsequent editions of Weather for Weather Geeks, and you can always get the updated forecast anytime on the Storm Tracker 21 app. Have a great rest of your Friday night, a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you back here on Monday.